Good early afternoon, or perhaps still late morning, everybody, and welcome to the Fighters' Cup presented by the United States Marine Corps. We are going to be looking at Valorant all day, and I mean all day long. I am Seplins, joined by Nerdy Bird, and Nerdy, before we jump into our first matchup of the day, Stony Brook versus Post University. How are you doing? How are you feeling in what is still morning for you, I think? Um, last night, <laughs> when on the, uh, in the middle of something, looks at the clock, goes, okay, probably should go to bed soon. I need to give my cats their nighttime snacks before so they wind down. Looks back at the clock and then goes, wait a minute. That doesn't seem right. Unlike you, though, I didn't, wasn't given the, the cue of, we had daylight savings by Discord. I walked yeah, into yeah. my room where my automatic cat feeders are, and I'm like, you guys have, it, it like, they're awkwardly, like, giving me this where's my food human being moment <laughs> and i'm like your food's coming in an hour what's wrong with you and then i look at my phone and i'm like and i look at the feeders and i'm like that's wrong and i realize oh no it was daylight savings so um i'm gonna be tired tomorrow and indeed i am tired <laughs> we are tired today, but much like your cats, we've got plenty of players in the wings that are hungry today. Hungry to get on the battlefield, to play some Valorant, and to put some stakes in their names. I believe we are in the round of 64 for the time being, so people are trying to make some statements early. We're in a best of one era for the time being, so it's going to be one of those circumstances where you make it work or you get worked out of the equation you get fully worked out of the bracket with 64 teams at stand i think we've found what has the potential to be quite a close matchup both stony brook and post are notorious for occasionally having that dog in them are they going to be able to as early as it is going to be going on today i i think so um i also think they might have what's known as some to as the uh, time zone buff but that also being said you and i had a discussion before this broadcast started about you know where we might end up this day starting at map wise we're aware of that map but i'm gonna leave that so that people can let that fester in their minds however you and i discussed one particular problem well at least that i personally have with one of the two maps and i said i don't want to see operators just staring down one site the entire time however do you think that someone's ability to pop off as heavily is going to be impacted by daylight savings today? Oh, I'm, I'm fully a believer in people usually play worse in the morning because we see it very often at live events. We see it at lands on weekend tournaments like this that start, you know, at 10 a.m. or even as, even as late as like 1 p.m. right here on the East Coast. We still see players struggle because they're so trained and used to playing at 7, 8, 9, 10 p.m. that going for this swap, going possibly 12 hours earlier, I always will believe that there will be a difference in performance. And hopefully it doesn't impact these teams too poorly because if it does... That's where things can go a little bit south. And as the, the curtain is pulled back a little bit for this round of 64, I think if anybody's ever watched Valorant be played anywhere, you're not surprised. We're starting with the classic El Clasico Ascent. Going to be our first map of the day. Yes, the discussion was between Ascent or Breeze, and Septilence was, of course, voting for Breeze. I don't blame him, but I was like, please let us go to Ascent. I don't want to just be looking at B-Site all day long. And with that being said... We had our, our insider intel be like, should we tell them? Should we tell the casters? And Septlins, you could hear the crestfallen moment in his voice of, no, we're going to ascend. Broke my heart. <laughs> because listen, I love Viper. I love Operators. What, what do I not love about Breeze, right? I mean, it is just the perfect map for me to watch. But something I do tend to love about Ascent is that everybody knows this map very, very well. This is the map players have played hundreds, maybe thousands of times at this point. And they have to perform very well in a traditional sense instead of of, oh, we can outplay them because they're going to be uncomfortable and they don't know what's going on. Everybody always knows what's going on here, Nerdy. So it's going to force these players to play at their absolute A game at 1 p.m. on a Sunday. Well, I can see at least coming out from post, this is a relatively staring composition. However, I've been seeing a lot more of a double smoke meta coming through and neither of these yeah. teams so far are picking with that double smoke so much. I mean, you've got Omen on both sides. Of course, standard pick, Sova. You have to have Sova and we're gonna have an Odin over on B site almost guaranteed. I love seeing that. However, Stony Brook choosing to not go with the jet for the initiator is a little bit interesting. Not saying it's a problem, but I'm just so used to seeing jet, especially on Ascent, that I am surprised. Yeah. I think going um, 
lack there of jet is really fascinating, but perhaps Aror is going to be going for, or Aror is going to be going for something of a comfort pick. We talk about comfortability and how important that can be for players down the line. When I played this game, I was playing Raze very often, and Raze works very well on some maps and terribly on others, but due to the comfortability of the agent, I found myself succeeding more often than people may have originally anticipated. So maybe we're going to get to see that with that Reyna. Unfortunately, Nerdy, I think uh, we should maybe pull back the curtain a little bit and just talk about the fact that Reyna isn't quite the duelist she used to be and it is difficult to get value on her like people used to be able to yeah especially considering okay let's be honest when you, you we saw the kj so we know someone's gonna be completely locking down b side yep. and you almost guarantee there's gonna be a sova as well so yes you can theoretically you use leer and you walk in or you use right. smoke and then you walk at you before you go out of smoke you can throw the leer out but i present to you the caveat of sova with location dart so with that in mind how much does the blind do when teams are still going to be able to see you? That is my biggest concern, seeing the Reyna versus the Jet. I also prefer the mobility of the Jet. Yes, it's very linear in comparison to Reyna, but sure. I do believe that Jet speed is what puts her just one leg above most Reyna players when it comes to the utility that each one provides. Well, absolutely. And I mean, not to talk about another unnamed first person shooter, but there's a silly little character named Lucio that has a the highest pick rate due to the fact that he's one of the fastest characters in the game, provides a speed buff. In these first person shooters, we see speed being consistently very important in helping your team get in and out of a site, to get in and out of a fight, or to just take somebody down and put your team in an advantage state. But with the pistol round, this is one of few rounds in the game. We're going to see absolutely no utility on the board, or at least very little thereof. And with a sheriff out from Zeno, that is screwed screaming confidence from post here. They're going to spend in the, uh, all of their credits to buy that heavy weaponry, and it works out well, a first elimination out the gate. Not to mention, we were discussing our initiators, and it happened to be an initiator against an initiator. It was Jet versus Reyna. Jet ended up being victorious. Yes, using the Sheriff does do more damage per headshot than using a Ghost or a Classic. However, right. it, it does come down to crosshair placement, understanding where you think the enemy is going to be, and again, that speed, because Jet has a get out of jail. Free guard is solo, comes in, uses Headhunter, and finds Sky first, but then unfortunately falls to the Omen. The headhunter is going to be Qualm. The beast is fed in this equation. And Meech with the sheriff as well. So these folks are really oversending it here at post. They're still up by one, but the sheriff is so dangerous because it's a one shot, one opportunity. And Meech finds it, gets that trade out in oh! Mojo. Oh no! Goes for the swift step right into Kike there. Kike, Kikniss, I'm not sure. But post now, 2v1. And Nerdy, I don't know. Even if post wins, it's like they've spent way too much on the board they've they've put way too much economy here they're not gonna get it back even if it's a round win well okay so it it's okay that we had three people commit i think there was three people committed to the sheriffs two people committed to the ghost um but the caveat is yes the deaths when you have that many people on your team die but also you're going in your you're, you're going in your first buy round so you bought a little bit more than most teams some teams might want to but you have guarantee if you are good at what you're doing one shot, one kill, almost as sure. you mentioned earlier. So it's okay. You just might not be able to be as, you know, spendy as some teams might want to be when you go into your first buy round. But now it really comes down to we're going to be behind by about a couple hundred creds if we do not bring this into bonus. So right now, if you're post, you're looking to guarantee that you lock down round two and perhaps round three and then force SBU to use just the credit bonus from consecutive losses to surmount the weaponry that you're going to be getting. Mojo has been pretty hyper-aggressive as we went with that last play, but the Hawk goes out, the Paranoid is through, we see the fault line go up, and the smoke is colossal! Mojo able to drop one, the secondary is going to cover back into Catwalk, Solo God finds another, Dissident takes out this Reyna, and with the weapon buy up here from Post, they really go for a bit of an overextension, we saw a Bulldog, we saw a Marshall, which can save them a bit, so the economy's a bit shaken, but things seem to be working well as Mojo will go down to the Sova of Stony Brook. I have a hunch that what we're going to see is because we lost one, that person, our omen, likely to have 
a stinger or a bulldog sure. passed over sure. to them, and then one person's going to buy the vandal or buy a phantom. But as I'm saying that, it looks like just gonna go back over to a stinger instead. Be like, okay, we're still gonna force the bonus. I appreciate that we don't have someone trying to break their team's economy, but you know, if you have someone who does decide to buy the heavy weaponry, you can just play the duo system and make sure that if it gets dropped or your teammate gets dropped, I should say, you're able to pick it up for them. Area. Recon bolt goes out from me. It's funny, they're they're almost like preambling for when they're gonna have the Odin. They're starting to bring the same place out early on. Solo God taken down by a round three phantom. The solo moving forward. Recon bolt to their own. Lear is out. Sight is not quite open, but the numbers are in favor of Stony Brook. And this is the round they're statistically expected to win. A couple of pot shots from Meech will find purchase onto the omen, and Post has a technical advantage in this 4 4 scenario. They do, they should have again, well, they should have, as we were talking about, had the credit bonus to buy the better weaponry. But losing someone early is never a situation you want to be in. They have managed to go in. They've gotten the plant. The question is, are they going to now play the post plant? Turning into the defensive team, flipping this fight in their favor when they are getting pinned down. We see the shock dart go through. We've got cloud smoke, one located, shooting through house. Aroar is going to pick up Mojo. Ooh. And there we go, from boxes, three fall down for post. Three go down, Post is not able to recover, and it's one of those scenarios where you go for the Russian, you go to play Hyper, but all of a sudden they're already looking at those angles. You do not have the utility or mobility to move fast enough, and Stony Brook keeping us at the statistical expectation here. They are going to be playing that third round victory. They'll bonus nearly every weapon into the fourth, and as Post is now able to buy up for the first time, are they going to be able to make this worthwhile? If Stony Brook wants to tip the scales, this is the opportunity to do so, but if they lose this round, that's where we start snowballing more realistically into maybe a 5-1 or a 6-1. This round going to be almost entirely mechanically based. And with the way the Sova from Stony Brook has been playing, Zeno has been there to answer it. I'm actually looking at those two to find that first one and give their team an advantage. And we are going to be looking at a B-site push inside. We have the dart go through. Solo, I believe, did get spotted. Has to use rendezvous. Gets out. Ooh, so, oh, that shot, shot dart. dart. Going to be able to get a lot of chip damage. I mean, just a couple people. It's going to force the overgrowth from Sky, heal the team back up, and I think maybe give away the fact, okay, well, now they definitely know you're in there. You got for the old Thorb and you're pre-firing corners. Not only that, they know that your Sky is one of the people in there because I'm pretty sure someone managed to see that aura during Sky's heal. You gotta. Yeah, it's like a glow stick. Owl sent out and promptly destroyed. Meech trying to jiggle peek from CT. Another shock dart about to go through. Oh wait, no, that's the recon dart. There we go. And there is nothing to hide them, however. Cake is rounding oh, the corner, uh. finds one. Meech will get the trade. Jay-Z will also pick up one. And the KJ who's lurking in mid got someone from the back of site as well. 4v2 in favor of Stony Brook. And with Post having the ability to buy up in utility and weaponry, they could be able to get one, maybe two eliminations. If you find two, then you've tied things up and it doesn't exactly get easier, but Zepho holding a pretty awkward corner. I'm not gonna lie, the double swing could be devious. Gets a couple of body shots, they double back and they walk right into the cross here. Zepho puts them down and Sony Brook ties us up two to two. And we can take a little quick look here at what Sony Brook's looking to commit to buying. One person, our KJ, who's not been as heavily involved in everything thus far, as well as Cakeness, might be a little bit broke if they end up losing their weaponry this round. However, Stony sure. Brook, obviously, they're they're managing to bring this back if they are, after being unsuccessful in the pistol round. It's very very hard to win round two. So this was about standard for the pace we anticipated most teams to be able to make a comeback. For so rounding out of A site, there's a default push occurring, but Spike is with the Omen on B site, so we gotta be careful Ooh. about that. Zeno, a blind fire spray, takes Cake out of the equation, and Zeno will go down for their efforts. A two for one trade, gonna be enough to keep the team confidently moving forward. Headshot from Meech removes the Reina from the equation, and it's gonna be up to these two remaining members of Stony Brook to keep the gas on the on the equation here. Zeno goes down center field. You, the last one left standing, 4v1, a Vandal in hand over here. I mean, there could be a possibility to clutch this out. One Elam already down. Dark cover makes it difficult, though. A relocation, not a terrible idea. 
Three oh, to definitely two. now. Sky is going to be struggling. Sends the hawk out of smoke. Oh, the headshot snap, but you got nope, the Check your angles, please. Please do the full swing and commit to it. Mojo is just chilling and waiting for you, unfortunately. That is going to be round loss for Stony Brook, and they're still going to commit to a full force, and if this force does not work out, some people are going to be very broke in the next round, and they're going to be forced into a very difficult saving situation, which could put them at a disadvantage that they're not ready to have to deal with as we're reaching, you know, round six into round seven. Get a little bit rough, and finally, our first shovel buy of the Odin of the game. It's gonna make me very so, happy. Oh God. With an operator as well, so they're going expensive on the side of post. They're gonna be able to lock down this B main recon bulk gets destroyed in solo. Getting up close and personal with this op. Probably just gonna anchor out if he has to do so. But if this leer goes out, that could be lethal. Gets out of the way fast enough. A very clever play, but unfortunately, just does not get them the utility they wanted off of buying those expensive weapons. B site locked down, and with the rotation toward mid, I'd suspect a market push to be much more likely than bricks. Maybe even straight up into catwalk here. Mojo has a good angle on the corner. If they catch the pre fire, Ooh. they are able to find the elimination. Maybe a little too close for comfort, but you got the W, and that's what matters. Seekers out, bullet to the back of Mojo. 4v4 on the board with a fast rotation toward the A site. Zeno caught in a crossfire, can't take down four members at once. Numbers advantage in favor of Stony Brook once again. Never mind, it's going to be a wrap up. Cake falls, dissonant has been removed from the equation, and Stony Brook's fire rate continues to give them this advantage. They're just not missing a shot when they start firing. Aor came in, found, got the leer out. Elimination, immediate dis dismiss into a, a, a sneaky corner. Another elimination, dismiss into hell. Undeterred by the fact there was an, uh, an Odin on the high ground spraying Hellfire from above. Worked out, still chilling down there, but Silver God looking for the Ooh. angle, finds the first one. Another There's Daisy, there's wow. Aor, but now it's gonna be down to the Odin versus a Vandal. Okay, we've got the Vandal swap. Hawk's gonna come out, looking maybe that we're gonna have Post go for a half defuse. No, they're just Can't trying to get Sky to peek. Oh. And there we go. Sky finds the elimination, securing the round victory. But a people are gonna be broke. Good performance. Yeah, this is this is fascinating here, Nerdy, because while that is a victory for Stony Brook, I mean you raise an amazing point here where at least two members on the side of Stony Brook are barely, if not just not buying at all. Zepho, 2300 credits cake, has to spend everything they have down to oh. 100 credits. I doubt their full utility. And post, they've got not as much to work with either. They're gonna be going for what I call a Franken buy. We've got a vandal on the board, we've got a guardian and and probably just a couple of classics. Maybe we're going free gun, by the way. And this is going to be a difficult scenario because Post, they put essentially all of their economy into that previous round and didn't get a darn tootin' thing out of it. So with Knives from Zeno, we've got the Tour de Force coming out from Post as well. This is another very expensive round, one they just have to win to make it worthwhile. Look, Stony Brook, if your Valorant credits look like my bank account, there's a problem. However, I get it. You had two ults that give you weaponry. So we have Zeno finding one elimination with their ult, as well as Breach finding two eliminations. So there's just two left standing for Stony Brook. Not a good situation to be in. This is what Post needed to do last round, because now they're doing this. That's great, but your economy is still garbage, and you spent two ultimates to win this round. If you win it, I mean, the 4v2 is very much a losable scenario as we're learning right now. Marshall Body Shot does get some intel. Solo puts down the Reyna. And with the last one left standing in center field here, this mid is not a good place to hide, especially when they already know where you are. Post will win their fourth round, round seven ending in their favor. And with two ultimates expended, they've lost the ult economy battle. And Stony Brook could really come out swinging here in round eight if they were to so choose. I think, honestly, spending the ultimates in favor of trying to stabilize their credit economy and bring it back up for this round was actually really smart. I mean, like, Jet's like, okay, I'm going out with the Classic because I have sure. Bladestorm. And then we have our Chamber, who's going to be our resident opera, who's like, I got a free gun coming in anyway. And so don't worry. I, I know I messed up and I lost an expensive one. So let me make that up to my team by uh, using my own for a moment. Yes, it was He, he said, don't worry. I brought this out from home. This, he said, I brought, yeah. this one. I brought this one with me. But imagine Rolling Thunder in combination with Hunter's Fury coming in. I mean, spending two ults so long as you get some eliminations, I think it's worth the price. I think, I mean, that's the risk, right? Is you can spend them and there's no guarantee you're going to get those. Okay, Solo God. Wow. Thank goodness for that teleportation, mm. that relocation anchor, because that was about to be a bloodbath against them.
Spending the ultimates is always going to be risk versus reward, especially with longer distance ones like the Rolling Thunder, like the Hunter's Fury. Um, Hunter's Fury, of course, gives you a little more intel, but as two go down already, I'm not sure we're going to be seeing Hunter's Fury because you can't use it from beyond the grave. Zeppo is going to find the tie-up there with the Sheriff. It's actually the Reign of the Empress that comes out, but I feel like Stony Brook maybe did not need it. However, that is a very unique ultimate in the sense of it's just, you might as well use it because you really don't get much out of it, all things considered. You're going to perform the same with or without it, so popping it. But the scare tactic alone goes a long way. The lockdown, I really do not like, especially when they knew there was a Hunter's Fury on the other side, but it looks like Post isn't going to be able to find it in time. The one thing I will say is that uh, Empress does give you a slight advantage if you're colorblind like my co-caster is because everyone gets Real. highlighted in a in that red color. It can make them a little bit easier to see. Not trying to throw shade at Zeppelins. I don't know what being colorblind feels like, but man, oh man, if I need You're not wrong, though. If you you bring a up a good it, point. <laughs> I'd be you, like, you... Empress every time. <laughs> the Empress is, is very nice aesthetically because it definitely forces people to uh, be a little more predictable with their play styles and it makes it a little easier to to lock onto them in an instant like that but the empress comes to a close it was a valiant effort from stony brook might i say but all those ultimates expended and the round was still lost so it's a really Here. tough circumstance to look at and Here. try to find the, the bright side of life out of yeah but it, we it, we had that round earlier where we saw two ultimates and little hesitant to done it was this worth it but then you know this time we had lockdown and Thanks empress so. committed and they and Stony Brook was not victorious. Post, on the other hand, was like, "Here's a Hunter's Fury." Yep, I, I don't mind the the Empress. I think the Empress was fine. It's the lockdown that I'm pretty anti. What we just saw, honestly, I think it was a really unique circumstance. I think it was a weird moment to be a part of, and I think Stony Brook just found themselves uh, on the wrong side of a very aggressive equation coming out from Post University. Post looking for their sixth round win, the pivotal round win in this first half, because that guarantees you worst case scenario, a tie up at the half. And that's assuming things go poorly from here on out, which for Post, I'm not sure we're going to be seeing Dark Cover out, forcing Stony Brook to play a little clunkier, a little riskier. And I'm surprised to see that they're still going for the A commitment instead of a rotation. However, with one approaching Cat here, could get an elimination tree and turn the tides in favor of Post. Ooh. Mojo goes down. That's not favoring post as we were anticipating. Stony Brook walking up catwalk. Nope, it's a it's a mid push. So was gonna back rotate. Delir is out. A little bit of damage goes out in market, but I don't think anybody's stoked with how things wrap up there. A couple members left standing. Critical condition on the side of Stony Brook. The overgrowth, I believe, still available, but only 10 seconds left. Oh, never mind. No more overgrowth. There's only 10 seconds left. You've got a hard rush into sight. There's basically two ways to end this. Neither of them are going to work particularly well for you. Solo God finds Zepho. Four seconds left on the clock. I think this is a plant. Just barely less than a fraction of a second, but there's only one member left standing at 25 HP. I'd like to see a save, but Nerdy, we're just not getting one. Not a comfortable scenario to put yourself into, and... They'll force you right out of it. Post is successful, doubling the score for Stony Brook. You mentioned how, you know, that's that, that six mark is very pivotal, and we say that because that means you are halfway through to victory. Stony Brook right now struggling a little bit. However, it's not the end-all, be-all going into the next round. So long as you, know, have four points to your name is better. Sure, Three, sure. Three's not great, but four is honestly at the minimum what you're trying to shoot for. So Stony Brook's still looking healthy, albeit a little anemic. Yeah, I, I can agree. Definitely looking healthy. It's not going to be the end of the world yet. We've got three more rounds here in the second half, or the first half. Where, where am I going? In the first half of Ascent, but this is a best of one. I feel like that's something we haven't maybe honed in on enough, that this is a one-shot, one-opportunity scenario. You know, is Stony Brook going to be able to capture that energy, or are they going to let it slip? Already solo god out of the way. Stony Brook 5v4 advantage. But this advantage state hasn't been as comfortable for Stony Brook as we tend to see it in a map like Ascent where you get the one player advantage and you're usually pretty darn confident moving into the rest. But Post has been so good at finding a, a, a counter first blood, if you will, taking somebody else off the table that Stony Brook doesn't often get to run away with these numbers. Oh, about to step out through the smoke. Zeno, though, just... There's another one, just like I predicted. Ooh, jiggling out from tree. That was gorgeous. We have a commit through mid. That is also where Spike is at. Sova's the one carrying it. Concuss goes through mid. 
There's the rolling thunder. Ooh. Mojo found one, found another. And the other two will fall as well. Post seven to three currently. Getting a little bit closer to the end of the first half. Stony Brook, you need to find at least that one extra round victory here. That's all that you need to make sure that you can go in not as anxious into the second half and worried about the outcome of every single yeah. round. It gives you a little breathing room. Not as much as every team would need or want, but still. It's funny as well because it's we're in a scenario where as as silly as it sounds, as obvious as it sounds, like an eight four, it's so much easier to work with. It's so much closer than something like a nine three, right? It's like or maybe a seven five, but I don't suspect Stony Brook to win this one. So more realistic, I think an eight four is closer to reality. But as the shot already comes out from Meech, I think this round is going to be traded up here. One Sova dismisses another, and with four members left standing, an incredible weapons advantage online for post. Stunnybrook may find themselves in a disadvantaged state, especially if Solo God can catch this early elimination. Sky, please check your corners. Please check your angles. Just, oh no. They never do, they never learn. <sighs> it's painful. Jet with the updraft tries to get some information about who's coming through. Doesn't see anybody, but they're making sure getting some shots through the smoke. It is 3v4 right now. We have Hunter, Sphere, and, and from the shadows, for Stony Brook. From the Shadows is the only thing that Post has. They can use that for information gathering, or they can try and use it to see if someone's committing to a different <laughs> site. So we've got a fight going on from Catwalk to Tree. Zeppo just being flashed into oblivion right now. Has to jump off the Catwalk. Back toward mid. A wonderful shot of the solo. Will be treated back by Mojo. Two eliminations for one. A wonderful deal for Post. And even if Post does win this round, we're back to something I was saying in round three, round four. But Post, it's an expensive round for them. So it's a difficult circumstance to be in. One thing I want to comment on is, yes, Jay Zeno right now is the only left player left standing for Stony Brook. However, when we saw them walking through Tree, and yes, we, we knew this was happening. It's okay. I digress. They checked the angles. I appreciate Omen checking all the angles. I know that you're a little more precautious. Well, cautious because you have Spike and you're the last player standing, but do that every time. I love seeing me some angle checks. Check your corners. That's the thing that we everyone should get used to hearing us say a lot today because we are going to be seeing it a lot. But something we may not be seeing a lot of is the losing team, Nerdy, which is, is single elimination after all. So if Stony Brook does get eliminated here, that is a bit devastating. But there is a pretty exciting scenario in the fact that this is one of many weekly matches that is going to be happening every Sunday besides Thanksgiving weekend, obviously. But I'm talking November 5th, 12th, 19th, December 3rd, and December 10th. So if things don't work out this week, you've got five more tries. Yes, five tries, but if you want to start out on a victory, you got to do that this weekend. And Stony Brook, if you're looking for that victory, it's going to be very hard. Oh, I love when we're actually able to see... Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, Kickness will manage to make it out alive. They were getting tracked because, of course, you know, you get some intel when you're doing the Hunter's Fury, and they were looking for the Adami Sova to return the favor from earlier. We have Solo God come through, get the first pick onto Sky, ends up pulling out Thota Force afterwards. That is going to be an oppressive weapon to be holding down in this location. You can hear the shots firing into market. Ooh. But the ankle hitting the shins, tickling the toes. Peaker's advantage. That is a that is an unlucky one. That's a GG go next if I've ever seen one nerdy. But right now it looks like Post is gonna have that tie up equation once again. Spike Plant will finally come through for Stony Brook. First time in a long time, honestly. And I'm looking to see if Post is gonna be able to answer this accordingly. From the shadows, get some intel. They get the locale on site. They know where some folks are playing back boathouse. But the information doesn't do you much. It's what you do with it that matters most. The smoke is out. Zeno almost wall banged into oblivion there. Has to play very carefully. The counter wall bang, not able to find the elimination. Cake goes down. Mojo gets traded. Lockdown comes out from Stony Brook. Zena is going to find one in Stony Brook. They just obliterate post. They do bring that 8-4 to the table. 8-4, I think, is a pretty standard first round comparison. We can see that is still not terrible yes if you're new to val it may seem like that's a herculean task to overcome a four round deficit going to the second half this is a standard scoreboard that we see a lot of the times at these halfway points you'll personally 
I don't enjoy 6-6 six, six ties because it means someone isn't, you know, making adjustments fast enough. But to see that we have this 8-4, it gives Stony Brook the opportunity to bring this back in their favor. Plus, they're sure. now on defense. I think defense is just a little bit more uh, easier, on a sense. I don't think this map heavily favors one side or the other, but I do think if they're smart about gathering their information, they play for the advantage, they try to peek out Standing instead ahead. of just immediately swinging, they'll be a little bit sure. more successful here in the second half. No, I, I could not agree more. I think we'll be seeing a little bit more success in the second half with a, a bit of adaptation, a bit of change. And I like what you're saying, you know, maybe 6-6 six, six is going to be indicating a little bit of maybe nobody's adapting fast enough, but I think the 8-4 almost tells that story even harder because it's dominant in favor of a team right now. There is somebody taking advantage state. There is somebody finding double the amount of game wins or round wins that we were seeing on the side of Stony Brook. Solo God's Headhunter opens the gate and Meech is going to be the one to close it on Stony Brook. This pistol round is huge as it will set the tempo for the rest of this second half. And I think this tempo is going to be set a wee bit faster than any of these teams were really anticipating. One thing I will say, though, is that having that four rather than being, you know, at a one or even a zero. So we have jay Zena find the first pick and Cakeness find the other. Is that this demonstrates post the gods currently of this game do bleed as we have Cakeness also pick up Meech. Sova versus Sova, only one can be victorious. I'm looking at Chamber. Chamber's very low. Lurking over by Tree. We have one exiting towards Wine. That's our Omen who also, who actually is at 100 health. So that's going to be a rough situation. Mojo finds one. Ooh, they are going to get caught in the crossfire of the spike detonating. It's not the end of the world because you're going to be buying, this, you're buying yeah. this next round anyway. But it's never really something you want to do is getting caught in the spike. But guaranteeing that the plant was secured and didn't get defused. Nicely done. I think the pistol round, you can full send it. You can get a little silly goofy with it. I'm not going to lie. It's um, You're going to bio up a next round either way. So you might as well full send it in a scenario like that one. And again, post is going for... It's, it's not quite a Franken buy. It's not a round two operator, right? But it's like we are seeing a pretty expensive journey from the side of post. I saw a guardian in the mix. They were going for a bulldog as well. Now those weapons certainly aren't cheap, nerdy. And... I'm just looking if that is going to be impactful in a positive note, in a positive manner for post. And okay, all right, never mind. Question answered. Bye. The answer to that question, in case anyone had looked away from their monitor, was yes, it, it was working out. But as I'm mentioning it, I might have cast or cursed it a little bit because we are now 2v2 over Omen for Stony Brook. A little painful. Less than half health. Not really a situation you want to be in, but it's not impossible. You think of health as a resource. It's not the end all. End all be all if you have one health. It just means sure. you have to be really good at matrixing your way across bullets. Two v two around that was very expensive for post. May not be as beneficial as we once anticipated. Recon bolt out from Meech on the high ground. Gives their low cal away, but nobody's looking for Solo, who's going to be down low. Zeppo is going to get taken out as well, and it's a 1-1 one, one now. You're looking the wrong way, Meech, but you turn back in time with the Guardian. They find the elimination, and Post is going to hit those double digits now on the board. 10-4. Let's see what type of weaponry is Post looking at for their bonus round. Guardian, Bulldog, Marshall... We have a Vandal buy. Zeno? Zeno, are you looking to shatter your teammates' economy? Probably. They're feeling confident. They're on, I mean, out of the last seven rounds we've seen, they've put away six of them. So they're definitely feeling good about their chances. Well, I don't argue that. Complacency can be a problem. So hopefully someone is ready to pick up Zeno's gun if they get a little bit too overzealous as they engage in this next round. Let's see how it goes. We've got some shots being exchanged. Turret got destroyed. Breach is eliminated. Zeppo's going to survive. Aori got to go down. Cakeness goes down. Okay, you know, I saw how many of those jet was involved, and I I retract my previous statement. Yeah, and I think I think we're seeing something pretty pretty silly goofy here on the side of post. Uh, their team composition is very offensive friendly. I mean, we're looking at a breach, we're looking at a chamber, a jet. I mean, you don't get much more aggressive than that. And I think we're really starting to see post shine because they're playing in the half they built their team comp for. They're playing in the half that they're most comfortable running into or being a part of. And I think that is part of the reason that they're starting to walk out so aggressively in these scenarios. They're starting to take a team down so quickly like they are Stony 
big rook because this is the comfort pick. This is a map they've played dozens, maybe hundreds of times, and this is a comp that they know like the back of their hand. Paranoia is going to be used on KJ. The owl drones will meet and greet each other. <laughs> See, we had the default push and we left the spike behind. That is what I'm used to seeing for default pushes. They've decided, sure. okay, we're gonna commit over towards B side. Jet rushes in, it's going to pick up the KJ sp spike plant. Looks like it's going in standard position as well. We've got Omen ready to lock down. Aori coming in on the flank. Check the angle, check the second angle. My heart is happy. I don't, that, that made my day. I feel like something that we're really starting to see here is post when they have a numbers advantage, great corner peak. When they have a numbers advantage, they tend to not lose it. They tend to win these rounds. They follow the statistical expectation that we're used to of seeing somebody walk away with a victory. And Zeno might walk away with an ace. They know where Cake is, and that's going to be five on the board. Zeno dropping the first ace of the day to win the penultimate round for post university against Stony Brook. Only two members left standing, but Zeno. Now, I mean, not even the most elims on the team goes from 10 to 15, though. What is that? 50% increase in elims? Yeah. Zeno popped off. I mean, you always got to feel good being the first ace on broadcast of the day, right? Oh, my goodness. No doubt about it. So we've got, ooh, okay. So Solo God going with the Phantom over the Vandal buy is a little intriguing. Most likely going to use Rendezvous early, so we're going to be starting a little bit more forward and then backing off. And we do also have... Sky on the other team choosing to go with a Vandal as well. Empress pops. Hunter's Fury used. One is eliminated from both sides, but two, three fall for post. Four, everyone is gone. Wow. It's like, it's the rounds that Stony Brook wins are, are all, they always seem to look like that. Where it's a very quick round, they get the read, they take the entire team down in like less than 10 seconds, and it seems to work really well, but Solo God is going to be going for an Operator again. I suspect one of two things. Either we go up close down bricks, or we hold around the mid site. So that's what I'm going to be looking at here, and I think we are leaning a bit toward that mid site, but as Post needs to win just one more round, even one elimination from this chamber opens the floodgates. Uh, if Stony Brook can make everyone on post side fall like dominoes again, we'll see. It's rolling thunders oh. executed over onto B site. Mojo's gonna send out smoke. We do lose Zeno, one of our very power heavy players. Uh, Two on both sides traded. Don't need him. <laughs> Imagine your your fallen team maybe like don't need you. <laughs> don't need him. See ya. 3v3 right now, though, and Post, I think, needs to play this pretty cautiously. This is a team that we've been complimenting the overaggression pretty consistently, but in reality, overextension here could cost you another round, and I think we all know this is a game all about momentum through and through, so they want to play it low and slow. They want to play it comfortably, and as they bring out a bit of a clunky Hunter's Fury, the space is created. Mojo gives away their own location. Oh. Defo puts them down, and it's going to be a 2-2 tie-up. That numbers advantage does not end well, as we anticipated, for the side of Post. Two left, though. They've been pretty loud players up to this point. Can Stony Brook answer back? That's a way to do it. Defo finds the cleanup, and Stony Brook puts their sixth round on the board. Down, but not out yet. You gotta be careful when you're using certain types of utility for anybody. Sure. Because it, it reveals where you are. If someone can see the angle it comes from, they know you're there. And yep. you, you mentioned it. You're like, Omen, you just gave yourself away. And Omen immediately got punished for it. You need to be aware of where some of their people are. You don't need to know exactly on the map where they're standing. But in respect to where you're at, have a rough understanding of how much intel you're giving away while you're using your own utility. Sure, right, absolutely. You've got to remember, like you said, everything has got like a trail to it, right? They're going to be able to tell where it came from. And as it's going to be playtime for post here, we've got the blades out as well. I think this is the third time we've seen these ultimates used in tandem like this. Not necessarily a bad thing, just interesting. But if they get the eliminations, it doesn't matter. It's the last round. So they can do whatever they want with these ultimates. Recon bolt out. Reyna with an operator holding close on catwalk into tree. This could be rough for dissident, but if they drop the flash out early enough, they should get this space for free. Ooh! Very nice. Great reaction time. Zeno gets removed. The blades are useless. Meech goes down as well. And just when things felt like they were going to be over, Stony Brook refuses to let go of this possibility of existence. Chamber said, do you want to play? Sky said yes, and then push him off of the top of the toy tower. Holy cow!
All right, Mojo. You got a sheriff in a dream. I never see you lose these. 1v5. 1v5. <laughs> never lost these. We got one ace already. Let's find a second one. Oh! Wait, I was no, kidding. Okay, no. Zeppo has the flank. Yeah. If there was no flank there, that could have been way worse. But there is a flank. Zeppo really doing a great job sneaking up on the opposing team. We've seen that a couple of times now where they get that pinch scenario. They catch Post off guard and Post has nowhere to run. It makes it very difficult to be in an advantage state when you're covered by all angles the way Stony Brook continues to be. Alright, so firepower equal on both sides. Shields both sides. Not everybody for post likely bought full util. I don't think they anticipated losing that last round, but you know, you need to anticipate the best for playing for the worst. Once we have Hawk used, smoke to add additional cover from Jet. Into the shadows used from post. This can gather a lot of information, but Omen decided to TP to mid. Not positive where they're looking to go. Actually, no, TP to back high ground on top of heaven. And lurk around up there. We see door get broken. Spike is planted. Post now going for post plant. Unfortunately, we're going to see Mojo fall to the enemy omen. Jay Zink is going to be the one victorious in that exchange fire. That's so... I can't believe we haven't been able to make the joke post plant yet. That's that's crazy that this is the first time it comes up over 20 rounds into a scent. But post right now finding themselves in a pretty comfortable position. 4v2. Spike has been planted. The lockdown is out. But as Zeppo goes down, so is the lockdown. Doesn't even have to. As Dissident hits in a banger shot onto the high ground. And post will emerge victorious. 13-7 here on Ascent over Stony Brook. They make it out of the 64. And they continue moving forward. Yes, but it wasn't perfect. As I mentioned, Not I, at all. you lost seven rounds. Was it due to complacency? Was it due to just, you know, those rounds being outplayed, not anticipating what's going to happen? But those rounds, you even talked about it. When Post lost in those instances, everybody was gone. Like, it was boom, boom, boom. Everybody's dead. That rapid fire of eliminations kind of just tells me that the plan that they were trying to execute, whether it was like, you know, something they practice a lot or not, it could very well have been a situation where it was something a little bit different than they normally do that resulted in the death of everybody very quick kind of shows me an issue that maybe you don't test the waters of some things on in a live tournament but again you know as you mentioned earlier you have five other chances if you end up losing today yeah you know this is this is a learning experience at the very worst right maybe it doesn't work out the way you wanted it to but you get the vod review you got to play on stream you get to learn from it etc cetera, etc cetera. plenty of great opportunities to come out of this this is a great event after all but i've got to say you know post university things were a wee bit shaky toward the beginning but especially that second half they seemed to lock in they seemed to get a little bit stronger and that early day debuff seems to be going away <laughs> just just a wee bit for the team so I, 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 wanna, I do want to take a moment to talk about Zeno in particular, the Jet player. While the Blade Storms were not ideal, while they were not super performative, while they were not very strong, I do think that the consistency of the Jet utilization, the cleverness of the updrafts, the accuracy of the weaponry really went a long way, and I think Zeno had a lot to do with post success overall. I was shocked we did not see Zeno like hard locking with a operator. Yes, you have right, a chamber, right. but typically, you know. We see that jet that's like, okay, round four, let me get the up. Pulls it out. And then from there on out, there's just no there's just no more rounds. Yeah, no rounds on the board. And Zeno did a great job. Brings things out a little late sometimes. A little there's definitely room for improvement. I'm not afraid to say that, but I do think they were looking pretty darn good overall. Rumor has it a couple of other teams maybe looking pretty good. Maybe like Boise State and Southern Western Oklahoma State University, which we may or may not have the chance to see on the other side of this break. We'll see you folks right back here with some more Valorant in just a couple of minutes.